Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. We had a request to go over the opening for the Young style form. You know, it's there's a kind of a classic opening that uh, that most Young styles seem to follow. And uh, uh, even if you're particular style doesn't do that. There's a lot to be gained from this particular exercise because it um, it's the simplest thing in the world, which is basically you're taking a step with your left foot to the side and reestablishing your, your central equilibrium. And uh, how do we do that in a way which is controlled, which is, which is, um, uh, rooted and connected, energetically coherent. And, um, you know, I have actually published on this, you know, I call it the, the most important move in your Taiji form. And that's because if you cannot take a step with full control, with, you know, being rooted and connected and energetically coherent throughout, then nothing else you do in your Taiji form is going to be rooted and connected. It's, um, it's one of those things that, that by taking some time on with this and really delving into the subtleties of it, you get a chance to go deeper and deeper into any movement in the form. That's because you by isolating each of these individual components, you really learn what it's like to be confident in your ability to hold a position in space, to be able to be connected, rooted, and to be able to extend with um, fluidity, with balance, with, with a relaxed and um, uh, powerful uh, demeanor. So the, uh, so being able to, to really understand this is, is, is worth, uh, worth the time. And when I first introduced this to, uh, to my students, and you know, we spent like months on just this one move because it breaking it down into its component parts is, um, uh, it, it's an eye opener. So, uh, Let's uh, let's 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 do that and uh, and see what you know what we get up because basically what what's happening is whenever you connect up like this you're opening up to the big chi you're no longer this little bubble of this little sack of water that's kind of floating on the earth you are you are plugged into the big system and the chi that you're using is no longer just your own chi. And the degree that you're able to, to execute consciously in present time, these, these, these movements allows you to amplify that, that your ability to, to tap into the big G and get more and more and more and be able to control it and be able to use it. And in so doing, you also start to let go of bad habits that you have accumulated over your decades of walking the earth. And you start to see, recognize where the limitations that you've placed on yourself through no fault of your own um, get, uh, you know, they have, they're holding you back from getting to that next level of, of, uh, of Kung Fu. So anyway, please stand up and let's, let's do this. So um, let's just stand with your feet, heels together, toes apart. And we're going to first explore the, the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration within this posture. 
his very neutral posture. This is, you know, we're before the beginning of, of, a, of, of the form. So the feet are heels together, toes apart. And you want to feel your weight kind of centered around the balls of your feet. And take a moment and really just feel into that. Because the, the, for most people, and I'm speaking for the broad YouTube audience uh, as well here, because it um, this is going out to more than just the people assembled right now. So the uh, we spend most of our time with our weight in our heels, or the weight on the outside of the of the foot. And whenever we do that, we disconnect from our uh, that the earth connection, the earth chi connection. So by getting your your, your weight over the balls of your feet, you're starting to access that bigger energetic connection with the earth. You're opening up the bubbling well points in your, in your feet, that is kidney one points and then they, and the sole of your foot. You're opening that up, which is a major energy gate. So even as we're just standing here, Knees are unlocked and you're just feeling your weight centered over the balls of your feet. You can feel the, the energy starting to build up already. That's because we are opening up the Yong Chuan points, the bubbling well. And the earth, the earth chi is bubbling up and, and filling your body. So the you want to have the sense of, of sinking down, dropping down into your legs. So you're releasing the, our natural tendency to push away from the earth and kind of feeling into the body as a supportive uh, structure. So without pushing away from the earth, just keep sinking you want to reach with the crown of your head. So your body, torso, legs, everything is sinking down while your the crown of your head is reaching up. You're reaching up with the knee one point. In doing this, we open the energy gate to the heaven chi, the yang chi of the heavens. We have the yin chi of the earth and the yang chi of the heavens. I'm doing this, tuck in the chin and feel the neck lengthening. And you're opening the space just below the cranium, just below the skull, the, at the, uh, the base of the skull there, the jade pillow gate. And this releases the Jing Shen, the, the spirit of vitality throughout the whole body mind. So by reaching up with the crown of the head, we're getting that Yang Chi from the heavens by feeling into the balls of the feet and allowing ourselves to sink down, down into the earth. We're feeling the Yin Chi of the earth and those two are mingling within your body. You're plugging into a much bigger system right now. And it's, it's really that simple. Learning to tolerate it is uh, tolerating more chi. That's, that's where the practice comes in. It's really quite simple to get to that point. Relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop. And what this does is it takes your pelvis, pelvis oftentimes is pitched forward, but particularly when the weight's in the heels. So as we sink into the balls of the feet, we can, the pelvis starts to level out. That allows the, you know, the, the spine to become this vertical 
rod vertical pole around which you can rotate. Now, just spiral down to the left. So that means you're kind of really sinking some weight into your left leg. And as you go down, your butt is not going sideways at all. You're spiraling down. So you're keeping the weight centered over the ball of the foot as you turn slightly. And the spiraling down means that you're actually feeling your body kind of screwing into the earth. And as you do that, you're releasing muscular tension in your hip joint, in your, in the quad. And then spiral down to the right and release the tension in the right quad. So notice that your, your body stays centered as you do this, even though your weight is primarily in your right leg now. And then you go back to center and without pushing away, without coming up. So we're getting sung qua. The sung means just to release down into your intrinsic structure. You're letting your body kind of sink in rather than pushing away. Point with your index fingers and just feel into the energetic connection that that provides, the energetic kind of coherence. It also activates the tensegrity of the body. That is your, the, the tendency of the body to kind of knit together the connective tissue system to knit together and create a, um, a living matrix is you know, what they call the connective tissue system. And whenever we activate through, through the pointing, through the energetic coherence, then the whole system comes online as a unified whole. Reach with the elbows. So notice that the arms are just slightly rounded. We're not doing this. We're just, oh, this is a very, very gentle kind of movement outward. And when we do that, by just reaching outward with the elbows, we open up the shoulder joints. And this is a really important part point here because a lot of us experience some difficulty with our shoulders. And by opening the shoulder joint, we create space there in the in, and that allows the chi to flow through. And so much of our tension is locked up in our shoulders where the muscles are fighting against each other. And that blocks our chi. As we do that, you can feel into your hands and notice that the hands are getting quite full. And you may feel tingling or pulsing, some heat, sense of fullness. So not only is there increasing your circulation, but you're increasing the chi flow throughout the whole body mind. I know a lot of you have heard me say these words many times before, and it's they're still it's useful to hear them again, to uh, explore the to bring awareness in present time and actually feel into it to allow me to guide your attention. Because our, our, our rational mind tends to want to create a whole bunch of shortcuts. And we move away from the actual real time participatory consciousness that is necessary to activate the magic. So right now we have the three pillars. We have central equilibrium. We have energetic coherence. And we've unkinked the hose by 
opening the jade pillow gate, by opening the shoulders, by getting sum qua. Everything is kind of, we're unblocking our internal impediments to, to accessing and circulating the energy. And now we're going to go into the opening. We start off in this posture here, and this is a neutral posture. We've kind of emptied out and allowing the energy to move through. This is, we're in a Wu Ji state. That is, there's a, we're, this is our approximation of, of the undifferentiated nothingness that precedes the actual somethingness, the Taiji. And now feel the ball, of, feel the balls of both feet. So what we're doing here is we're initiating movement by first activating consciousness. We are directing our minds to feel the balls of the feet. I know you did it before, but doing it again anew, what that does is it, you are controlling your mind. You are directing your awareness and your ability to focus your attention, your ability to control your attention is probably your most important superpower. So doing it in a very controlled setting like this is good practice. You're feeling the balls of both feet because now we're going to split that and we're going to just feel the ball of the right foot. So we've gone from both feet to now feeling the ball of the right foot. So this is a first step we're making in making the right leg more substantial. We haven't shifted any weight. We haven't done anything physically, but just the fact that we're feeling the ball of the right foot now means we have, uh, we're initiating that process of creating substantiality in the right leg. Now feel your knee setting over the ball of the right foot. You may have to move it around, particularly if your weight is on the outside of your foot or in your heel. You, have, you may have to shift it so that you're centering that. There's a sweet spot there where you're able to take the load into that leg. It's, you're, that knee is going to be set now. It's going to not move as we do it. So all the movement we're going to be doing for the next couple of uh, uh, steps is, is through the hip joint. So what we're doing now is we're by setting the knee, we're creating a structure that allows us to relax the hip joint, the qua, and gives us freedom of movement. And that enables us to relax the rest of the body as well. So now you, you feel that knee, you feel the ball of your foot, and you're going to release down, spiraling down to the left. Not much, just, just enough to let your body know that, oh, we're really committing to the inside of the foot. And we're really committing to the fact that the ball and the knee are set. So, and that committing there, that, that releasing down then opens up the hip joint. Because any lateral movement, any, any movement to the side is going to lock up your hip joint. So this is a, this is a way, this is a, a hack to get the, the hip joint released. Because what the, anytime we wanna to move to the right, which is what we're gonna be doing in a moment, we need to first 
barrel down to the left. And that puts the uh, puts the clutch in so that we can then shift gears. So now you're feeling the weight more pronounced on the inside of your right leg. And that is creating a structure that is very closely aligned to your center line. So if we're, your weight's on the outside of your foot, then it's gotta go around in order to create a, a structure and that requires a lot of muscular tension. This way you can release your muscular tension, even though your legs may be a little tired right now, you want to, uh, the, it's, you're, you're learning to use your yin muscles in your, in your leg. So now we're going to turn and we're going from about 90% in your, actually about 70% in your right leg now. Now we're gonna make it by turning without moving sideways at all, turning. We're, we now are central equilibrium in the right leg. Feel that line there going down the inside of your foot. And you've got about 90% of your weight in your right leg now. So we're, we're taking, training the leg to be able to really be confident and that it can hold, hold your, your, your body in a, in a stable posture. And this also allows the energy to amplify. So you're sinking down into that, that right leg and pick up your left heel. So now we've gone to about 95%. We're just on the toe of the left foot. So we're really committing to that right leg and we want to train it so we're not having to shove the weight to the side in order to make that happen. We want to be able to sink down and spiral down to the right because we're going to be stepping to the left now. And to be able to do that, we need to be able to really trust this right leg. So now just make a gentle step out to the left without shifting any weight. So you're, you're still about 90% in that right leg. You're still turned to the right. You're still central equilibrium. Your left foot is occupying a position, but it's not holding up your body. It's just the weight of the leg itself. Now you want to feel the ball of your left foot. What are we doing? We're using consciousness, directing our awareness to say, okay, right leg, thank you very much. We're going to go to the left leg now. We're going to create substantiality in the left. We do that by bringing awareness, attention to the left. We start by, we get one point, the ball of the foot so that we are locked in on that. That's our anchor point, that's the bullseye there. So now we set the left knee, so that we're establishing a relationship between the ball of the foot and the left knee. And notice just by doing that, you're starting to, there's a shift occurring in your body. You're starting to, the left leg is starting to take over some of the load. The right leg has still got majority of it, but you're you're gonna you're gonna do that. So now you're going to spiral down to the right, but loading up your left leg. So you're still maintaining that central equilibrium. And feel that feel that connection throughout the whole body. And you're sinking into that leg, releasing tension in the hip joint, in the, in the muscles and tissues around the hip joint, your quad. So now we've gone and we've got about, we've gone from 
90, 95 in the right leg. Now we're actually into, we got, you know, we're pushing toward 50% in that, in that left leg now. And as we turn, we pivot on the right heel. And now we are 50-50. We're back to feeling the weight, we're feeling the balls of both feet. We're orienting on the balls of both feet. Reaching with the elbows, opening the shoulders. And we're reestablishing our three pillars, even though they never really left. We're reaching with the crown of the head, feeling the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. And just feel into the, your body. Feel the chi. Feel that sense of fullness. Feel the way your feet kind of just are sinking into the earth. You're rooted and connected. We're just taking a moment here and just feeling into the amount of energy that we just created by doing what? We took a step. We did it very mindfully. I feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, you're spiraling down and step in. So we're back to Uji. And deep breath. And as you press down, disappear the energy. Throw it away. Just pause a moment and just feel into the stillness, the emptiness. Okay, please have a seat. How'd that go? Good. Did that uh, answer all the questions you had, Scott? No. Oh, good. That, that didn't answer any of them, actually. But um, I tell you, that was. It was really good. I really got the uh, sinking in sinking in sand feeling in my legs. It was like really, <clears throat> really palpable. Um, one thing, I, one thing, and I guess it's just something I got to work on is that I noticed that to get my right knee over my the ball of my foot, I really had to push my I really had to push my knee in. Not just uh, probably just being out of alignment for a long time. Could be, could be the uh, could be stiffness in the qua that uh, that you know over over decades you know kind of creating a structure there. So you don't force it. So the alignment um, can doesn't have to look the same for everybody. You know, it, it's more of a connecting the dots. So you're running it through the knee, you know, you're, you're, you're connecting with the ball of the foot, you're running it through the knee, which you find the sweet spot for yourself that allows you to release your hip joint and ah, get very relaxed into that. 
and which then allows the rest of the body to relax as well. So, so uh, go ahead. Okay, well, yeah, no, that's great. Um, what I actually wanted to do was go through that move and then the next move where you, you know, we bring our arms up and down. And I would, to do it with the, the um, you know, yin and yang and the breath. Okay. That's what okay. I was. Good. We can, uh, we can do that. Okay, Valerie has something, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any other any other questions? I actually want to give people a chance to take a little break uh, because some people's calves may be may be feeling it, and uh, um, just take a take a moment there before we uh, before we press on. The uh, oh, the other thing about about the, you, your first question, is, Scott. You know, people. Some people have. Uh, their, their knees are different shapes. I mean, you get people with bow legs, say, and you don't want to try to correct that all in one shot. You know, you, you know, your your idea is to work with what you got. It's still the same idea, just you want to work with what you got, and uh, and uh, you gradually let go of the impediments to to be able to to be able to execute the movements fluidly. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Any questions, thoughts, difficulties, objections? OK. Uh, you ready to go, go forward from there? So we want to connect it up with the, uh, the breath and the yin and the yang. So um, let's take a look at that. So just to, to really be clear, all we're talking about is, is how do we do this? How do we take a step out like that? All that, that those, all those intermediate, intermediary steps that we, that, uh, that we just went through are just a way to be able to do that and remain rooted and connected throughout. So the um, it's a uh, it's really you know, such a simple thing, and the problem that most people encounter with it is they lean, they sink into one leg so they can step out, and then they rock to the other side so they can go back to center. And we're trying to do it in a way that allows us to maintain continuity throughout. So each step of the way, we're able to handle whatever load that they that may be on the body that, uh, and be able to handle with, with full energetic coherence. So let's take it from the beginning here. So we get back into our central, we, our three pillars, our central equilibrium, energetic coherence, and we got Sun Kwa, reach with the elbows. So we really want to feel that chi. So you always want to feel the chi before you start to move. So we, as we, um, when we initiate, we want to feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and spiral down to the left. So this is a yin move. It is, we're exhaling. And as we turn, we're still exhaling. So this is all yin. And now we're going to take a step, and this is a yang move. So we're, we're going to inhale as we step, and then exhale, yin, and, and then inhale as we go back to center, yang. And depending on how fast you do it, ordinarily most most of the time, you're not going to be doing it that slow. You're just going to be doing it yin, exhale, step, yin, still yin, and then yang. Because it's, that step is only going to take you, you know, a second or two to accomplish. But 
when we're looking at it in terms of yin and yang, there is that releasing down. So when we exhale, we're, we're activating the yin aspect of the energy. Yin. And it's still yin here. And ah, we go back and yang. And now we're going to go to the next part. We exhale yin. We just kind of bow forward slightly, soften at the uh, at the qua. So that's that's an exhale, it's a yin. And then yang, we're going to inhale, reaching up with the wrists, reaching with the fingers. We're inhaling, feeling the yang chi, the expansive chi. And then exhale, ah, reach down with the elbows, reach down with the wrist, bow forward slightly. We're just doing the simplified version of, the, of this posture right now. And then inhale, Yang, expansion, we reach down. Opening the joints. The arms are still rounded slightly, but they're, you're reaching down and you're feeling that kind of tug on your connective tissue, which gets everybody all excited and sends a, uh, a charge. It's called a piezoelectric charge, but it's in throughout the whole, the whole musculature and uh, through the connective tissue system. So you're, the chi gets distributed throughout the whole system. So we we'll do that again. So you feel the balls set the knees, bow, exhale, yin. And then inhale, reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Inhale, yang, expansive. Reach with the fingers, open between the shoulder blades. Everything here is yang, it's expansive. And now, ah, we're going to go yin. Bowing forward from the hip joints, from the qua. Feeling yourself sinking down, 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 down. And then yang, inhale, straightening up, reaching down, opening. Feeling the connection, feeling that energy circulate throughout the whole system. One more time. Exhale. Actually, take it from the top. Here we go. So, ah. exhale, yin, yin, step, yin. Yang, Yin, Bao, Yang, coming up, reaching, exhale, elbows, wrists, bow, sink. Inhale. So let's take that one step further. And we'll do um, the wave hands like clouds posture from the uh, Young Cheng Fu's 13 original postures. And coordinate that with the breath. So feel the ball, the right foot, set the right knee, you're spiraling down to the right, your yin. And then inhale, yang, right hand comes up, you're reaching. Now you feel the ball, the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, your yin, you're sinking in and then turn, yang, you're reaching. And exhale, spiral down to the right. You're loading up the left leg and then that's yin and then yang, you turn. Mm. 
feeling inhale and then exhale release feeling the ball of the right foot set the right knee spiral down to the left and then turn young inhale and then let's just keep doing this so left leg and you're sinking yin exhale yang inhale yin exhale yang inhale yin exhale Young inhale. Good. Exhale, yin, arms come down. And then just allow your breath to, to normalize. But become more an observer of your breath now. Recognizing the yin and the yang that's happening all the time. Even when you're not directing it. Step in, inhale, expansive, young, exhale, yin, uh, releasing, sinking. Seat, please. How'd that go? Good. Cool. Um, any questions or thoughts or yes, yeah, Scott. So uh, what I noticed was when we when we're standing with our heels together, toes apart, that's when I have trouble getting my knees over my balls of my feet. But when I'm standing, you know, in a, in a regular stance, it's fine. Oh, good. So okay. it's just. So uh, one thing you might want to do is not bend your knees quite so much. Mm. You know, just just unlock the knees and and you know, pretty upright, and then uh, uh, that might you might find that easier to uh, you know to, to control. Good. Anybody else? That was a lot of change. How did she? Um, Good time to discipline shoulders. Uh, okay, uh, let's do. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, let's do. There was a request for uh, sorry for some simple stuff to do with shoulders, and uh, let's let's do uh, let's do uh, a little bit of that. Why don't you uh, stand up? <laughs> Part of the, th the thing about shoulders is getting them so that they 
they're aligned in a way that allows the energy to express. And a lot of us, as we particularly as we get older, there's a tendency to collapse the shoulders forward and it contracts at the chest and it um, there's a we get kind of a turtle back kind of a, a approach on that. So the consciously opening the chest, opening the shoulders is uh, is is important for the um, uh, to be able to get them aligned in a way that you're able to to move efficiently and so that you're not fighting yourself as you're doing it. So um, one thing we can do to, uh, uh, to do is to start to break up the muscles and fascia that are kind of jammed together because of patterns that we've, we've been, repetitive patterns that we've done over, over the years. So one, one exercise is to, to learn to isolate the shoulder and to move it around independent of the, uh, of the rest of the body. So you're, you're, you're opening the joint. So you start by just with your right shoulder, you're reaching with the shoulder, rolling it up and forward, and then down and back. So you're bringing your shoulder blades together and back. And then shoulder comes up, opening the back, and then down and uh, opening the chest. And again with the right shoulder and open. So here we're expanding that very gently. And it's something that uh, your body starts to acclimate to. So you just continue to roll that shoulder. So notice the arm is really just along for the ride. You're not, uh, you're not tensing that up at all. Yeah, it's really critical to be able to have the arm just kind of hanging out because you're focusing all your attention on the shoulder. And then we'll go to the left side and we'll do the same thing. We'll circle uh, and back, shoulder blades together and back and then up and around and shoulder blades together and back and left shoulder circle. Open and good. Now we're going to go the opposite way. So this is we we've been going forward. Now we're going to go. Oh, we're going to go backward and open. Ah, oh. and so feel that when you're back like that, your chest is opening, your shoulder blades together, and then so you're creating more space in your chest, more space in your back as you do this, and the shoulder is starting to free up because it's no longer limited by the, the fascia, which has gotten glued together. And just take it nice and easy because it's something that, you know, you may have to uh, uh, work at gently. So anyway, left shoulder open, shoulder blades together. Good. Uh, and you shake it out. You just really let your arms hang and just feel that. So you're opening the chest, allowing that to release. 
you know, your elbows out to the side a little bit. So you're getting that slight roundedness in the arms, opening the shoulder joints. And this allows the tissues to unwind because they have a tendency to, to jam up together. And this allows it just by hanging them, it unwinds a connective tissue. Now bring your hands up and reach out to the sides. So here, you wanna bring your shoulder blades together and back. So as close as you can. And that, what that does opens up the chest, the shoulders, you're reaching out. Your arms are very relaxed. Your elbows are lower than your wrists. Notice that pointing down. So what you don't want to do with this one is have your elbow like that. It's dropped, right? So you're reaching out like this. So feeling that, that, uh, um, Sung in your arms. And, and what we're gonna do now is with the shoulder blades together, we're going to make little circles with the hands. So turning it this way. So it's a very small circle. You're very directed with the, your fingers as if you're doing traveling ovals, your little circles you're drawing with, with your fingers. And the shoulders are relaxed and you're, this is great for rehabilitating the rotator cuff. A lot of us have wear and tear on the rotator cuff. And uh, this is one way to start to reclaim that. And you're, by releasing the tension in your arms and circulating like this, you're, you're, also allowing the chi to move through the shoulder. It's not getting locked up. So you can do 20, 40, you can do sets of, of them at various points during the day, just to kind of get that going. So then rotate your palms upward and still reaching out. Notice how open my arms are. The elbows are still dropped, you know, but my hands, their hands are reaching out. And you're going the opposite direction now. So we're using these very um, um, kind of weak muscles in the rotator cuff. A lot of the problems we have with rotator cuff is that they're asked to do things that they're not designed to do. They're not very strong. And so by, by doing this, you're starting to rehabilitate and tonify some of the, the, the muscles in the rotator cuff. And by doing it in this relaxed way, you're allowing the chi to flow. You're extending outward, which is allowing for a lot of yang chi in the, in the, uh, in the motions. Relax. And there's a whole bunch more of the shoulder exercises we've got, but that's a couple just to get you, get you moving on it. Feel into your hands right now. Notice that there's a whole, whole lot of uh, circulation and a whole lot of chi in the hands. And you're it's, it's reflecting the, the enhanced chi flow in the whole body. Step in, deep breath, and exhale, yin, disappear the chi, release, let go. Hey, have a seat, please. Uh, how was that, Rick? It was good. I got a question. Good. And, and that is when we're when I'm rolling, we're rolling the shoulders forward and back. 
is it okay? Because my bones start popping and cracking at that point. Is that a good sign that it's loosening up? Uh, probably. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would not force anything. You know, I just kind of nibble at the edges, but I, I know that you will do that anyway. Yeah. But the bones popping and cracking indicates that, you know, you got uh, you got things which are kind of glued together and you're, you're kind of opening that up. So, you know, I would say on the do it, take it easy as you're going through that. So you don't uh, don't pop anything that shouldn't be popped. But uh, it I think it's a, a, I find it a generally a good thing whenever I kind of like, oh, OK, oh, I got this. You know, I can I can feel myself, you know, opening up. And then the other thing, too, it can tell you where your alignment is 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 off where things are rubbing together that shouldn't rub together and so then you say oh okay oh that's rubbing together what if i open up a little more create a little more space in there what happens then and then you can start to explore your your body and play with that and and you know all this is under the heading of reclaiming lost territory it's like we're trying to you know find that that youthful vitality and flexibility that um, is promised to us in the, you know, in that old Taiji adage, you know, the, the uh, strength of a lumberjack, the pliability of a child, and the wisdom of a sage. And uh, so we kind of move, trying to move in that direction with all these little steps that we take. Cool. Anybody else, Scott? Um, just something. Uh, my yoga teacher, probably 50, 100 times over class, would say, shoulders down and back. And I actually talked to you about this in Sedona, too. And it's something good for all of us. Like, even when you're sitting and watching TV, just put your shoulders down and back. Or when you're at the computer or whatever, shoulders down and back. It really... It, yeah, you know, it opens up, you know, opens yeah. up the get that uh, going. Like anything, it, we can take it too far, but it's uh, it's a general, you know as a general uh, thing for, for most people, that will be, that will be a help. Cool. Anybody else? Okay. Great. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Maria. See you next week. Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>